Hi, my name is Bob McNellis with Polk County Fire Rescue, and today we're going to talk about large area searches and the equipment that we use. If you've seen out in the field, we have different kinds of bags and ropes that we use. In this situation, we have about a 200-foot two, bag of rope that utilizes beads as well as loops. In this situation, each bead is going to signify 25 feet in. So this is a, your 75-foot mark with the loop leading in to the structure, the beads leading out. On the situation over here, this bag, we have knots that also equal 25 feet in. Here's one knot equaling 25 feet. The knot goes in and the loop is leading out with an anchor. Each bag also carries webbing uh, to be able to tag off of and, and reach out even further. Both have anchors on them, have straps on the bag so that way you can carry them easier. On this one, we're going to show you how to do a, a simple anchoring system, which should be about 10 feet outside of the structure. And we're going to try to get about maybe three foot in the air if you can, but again, realizing that every structure is going to be different. So as we do our walk around, we're going to try to find our entry point, and then from there, find a place to be able to tag in. We've decided on this. I'm going to try to go high if I can, loop some way so that way it stays up and outside crews that come in later can see what we have. And we're gonna keep it taut as we go in. I already know that I got my 10 feet, and as I go in, I'm gonna look for those beads, I'm gonna look for the loops, that way I can familiarize myself with where I am and how far into the structure I've gone. Our crew has gathered at the front of the structure, they've tagged in, and they're gonna go ahead and get the line ready. They're gonna take the anchoring portion of the search bag out and anchor it off. Trying to get as high as they can. Every situation is gonna be different. Then what they're gonna do is as a team, they're gonna tag off on a tether line so they can get out and spread out. The man with the bag is gonna continue on a left-handed search, staying with the wall. And the crews are gonna tag to each other so that way they can spread as far as possible. And in this situation, they're using the webbing that they normally carry on them. They're gonna try to get as wide as they possibly can, trying to cover as much space Meanwhile, the man with the rope bag is going to stay as far left, obviously on that wall, thusly a left-handed search. Firefighters will also use tools to reach out as far as they can, using the blunt end, in this situation an ax. Once the crews reach a corner on their left hand search, they're going to wrap that bag around something so that way they can continue with a left handed search but be able to take as much slack out of that line as they can. Although it will affect the overall length in the search, uh, it shouldn't be enough to affect how far they read in by the knots and by the beads. The man in the bag is going to stay to the left. The crews are going to stay tethered and continue to search as far as they can. Again, the key here is that we're staying to the left, searching as far out to the right. The bag man is staying anchored to the bag and staying on that left wall. For training purposes, all we're showing is a left-handed search. But for a right-handed search, the technique would be exactly the same. For training purposes, we've already shown the crew tagging in and anchoring off. 
for an orbital search, the lead man is gonna go push out into the, the middle of the room. And the crews have now tagged off of that line to begin an orbital search. They're gonna reach out as far as they can. And as they come to a bead in the line or a knot in the line, they'll start their search. The lead man's gonna stay out front. It's gonna allow the middleman to go ahead and do one orbital rotation for an orbital search. Using the blunt end of the tool, sweeping all the way around in one circular motion, staying on that tagline that has been tethered off. Again, continuing around in one 360 degree circle, utilizing this tagline. Also in the back, we have a tick man who's going to be on the thermal imaging camera checking out in front of him. Could also be utilized in the front of the search, but in this situation, he's looking out for the crew. He's looking through the open space to see where his crew are, help them position. He's going to move up to the first bead so that way everybody else can continue into the structure. The search man is called out to the man on the tick to help with the search. If visibility was low, the search man would not be able to distinguish what he had, so he would call back to the tick man to help get a reference. Crews would also use this technique to continue further on into the structure, utilizing the beads or knots to keep their distance. In this situation, we're gonna do what's called an arts, arch search. We've already tagged in and we've already anchored off. The lead man has entered the building and given space from the first bead or not. The crew is gonna to work together on a tether line. And just like an orbital search, this is a two-man search now where they're gonna work in half moons or arches on each side of the tagline. Obviously spacing out so that way that their tagline will be taut and they can work their half moon space.
You notice that the firefighters are using tools to assist with their search, using the blunt end, reaching out, keeping their tether line taut. Once their art search is done or completed, they're gonna meet back up and continue on towards the lead man until they get to the next knot or the next bead in the line. And this style of search would continue again on into the structure with the same technique. All right, what we have here is a left-handed leapfrog search already in progress. Our crew is already tagged in outside. And in this situation, they're not using a large area search bag. They're just gonna use the webbing they have tethered to each other. The lead guy is gonna head a search around, hit the wall, Give a couple of tugs. Let his backup guy know that he's ready to now continue the search. So now the lead guy is going to stay on the wall. The man in the back is going to sweep all the way around, reaching out as wide as he can, staying tethered using their webbing. Now he's basically become the lead. He's gonna sweep all the way out until he reaches the wall. And again, now that he's found the wall, he's gonna give a, a quick tug on his tether line. And again, this technique is just gonna carry on in the same fashion leapfrogging one over the other, one man on the wall, one man searching out, all the way through the structure. Okay, in order to recap, we wanna go over what we use and go over our searches. Obviously, we use two different style or showed two different style of bags. We showed a bag that uses knots in the line with loops and another bag that uses beads on a line with loops. Again, we, this is gonna be called our large area search bag. It could also be used as a tag line. We also showed using tethering off of that line using the webbing you might have with some carabiners. It could also be looped through and carried along as a tether from your search line. Again, just like anything else we do, the more you practice this and train with this, the more familiar you're gonna be with it all. So try the different techniques that we showed and get out there and train. Okay, and let's remember these tips. We're always gonna have full personal protective equipment, including your SCBA. Make sure to check each other and look over your gear. We're also gonna do a 360 degree size up of the structure. Look for means of egress and ingress. We're also gonna make sure we're using the PAR and TAG in system outside of an IDLH atmosphere. Establish an entry point. Secure the main line search rope to an anchor point, preferably three feet above ground or somewhere where the outside crews can see it. Establish a writ before making entry into the structure. Advise incident command of making entry. Lead crew members shall keep main line search rope tight. Always make it tug. Use good communication between crew members. All crew members must maintain contact with main line search rope throughout the search. Maintain awareness of structural orientation. As you go along, try to guess where you are and figure out what you're doing inside the structure. Maintain awareness of how far the anchor point using the marker system. Uh, try to look for those beads and look for those knots. Periodic monitoring of air supplies in large structures is imperative. Good communications with incident command to include updates. Make sure we're hitting our benchmarks, location, additional resources if needed, obstacles, additional egress or ingress locations, and or if a victim is located. Locate and assess and package victims for removal. And then exit structure notifying command of such.